Doodle Bud here. I've been playing around with my 3D printer again because I have a 3D printer review coming up. This time it's for a different style of printer. It's a resin style printer, so a liquid resin that is poured into a vat. It's cured with UV light, so it polymerizes. It goes from liquid to solid, and the resulting prints are very precise. I'm wrapping up the review for that one. It's coming out in a couple days, and initially I didn't even want to do the video just because those types of things are very time consuming but I have wanted to 3D print a pen and doing the review for that machine was the motivation to get off my butt and just actually start doing this. My design skills were lacking, so I had to improve those in order to design something worth printing. Now you will obviously say, well, I'm just copying the Omos 360 or the Mahjong V60, and you are correct. My skills are still very much at a novice level, so it's tough for me to even know the commands and how to go about designing these things and just, just how to draw it out in the Fusion 360 and it's even tougher to come up with a unique design all on your own so to save myself the agony i took out my mahjong v60 and thought one thing about this pen and same with the omos 360 the real deal i always thought this this pen needs a bigger nib this has a number six size nib but i thought just this pen just it needs a bigger nib so that's what i did here we got the junlai number nine nib in this thing i still have to finish off the design for the cap it's going to be a slip cap i've been playing with this little feature here and the cap liner to have a nice just enjoyable click type of sound when it goes in there holds it nice and secure and still provides a good seal so i'm still wrapping up that design and have to do some test prints but this right here is the holy grail as far as i'm concerned currently for resin style 3d printed pens this is from hex pens this is their dna evolution pen it's got this double helix which is a dna strand the ink looks really really cool in there but it's the print quality that is fantastic. Theirs is done with a clear resin, so is mine. So you can see I got a long ways to go to make mine look as good as theirs. But you can see if they've improved things over time, things get clearer, things get better. They change the material on the cap. They've improved the threads. They've leveled up because now they've included a clip on it, custom cap bands, that's a really nice touch, and also adding a trim ring on the back. So they're much more serious with their pen. And that's the way it goes. That's the evolution of a process. Your first rendition would be quite neat, but it's never as good as your next one, your next one, your next one. You're always improving, always trying to improve little details a little bit, trying something different, making threads a little bit nicer, fitment a little bit better processing a little shinier transitions even nicer so i saved myself the agony of trying to come up with a unique pen design and going with one i like using the omos 360 and the mahjong v60 as a reference and if i can pull off a good version of this existing pen i feel then i can start playing around with my own designs i need to know how to essentially replicate this as best i can and overcome some of the challenges be it with assembly or processing or whatever it is, fitment of other parts, if I can overcome those and pull off a good replica, then I'm ready to tackle other things. This is another 3D printed pen. Now this is a different style. This is done with those the filament style printer and the hot nozzle at the end of it. And that's this type of 3D printer here. So you have a spool of filament, it goes along a tube system, it's heated up in the print head, and like a magical precision hot glue gun, it prints and just builds on top of itself. And so Michael Liu, who's in Australia, uh, he creates platypus pens, that's his brand. Again, I think he's the top dog in the, what we call FDM world, the filament style 3D printed pens. He does a fantastic job. Each rendition is better than the last. This is his latest one that he has. Fit and finish on this thing is absolutely fantastic. He even stepped up, went with an ebonite feed on his pens. I have review on all these pens you're seeing right now. And again, a natural progression is to add a clip onto your pen. That's a big step up. There's also these little details right here. So that little red dot on both ends of the pen. When you're printing this out, this will be the very last movement of the print head and there'll be a little zit right there. It's a pain to get rid of it gracefully. So I don't know exactly what he's done. I don't know if that's a little jewel that he puts in there, maybe a piece of salt acrylic that you polish and you, you pop it in there or if that's 3D printed. I don't think it is 3D printed. Maybe it is, I don't know. But he put a little jewel in there essentially in the end to cover that little zit that's down there. He added an ink window that's in here. He improved his threads by actually now he writes the G code for the pen. So he actually doesn't use CAD programs at all on these. He doesn't use the slicer software like I'm doing, which takes your design. And then what it does is it does a whole bunch of uh, computing and it translates these into individual layer lines telling the machine exactly what to do. He tells the machine 
exactly what to do. So he generates his pens and the whole design body, everything uh, with generating, he has scripts that does this, but generates the G code. So all the tool paths and movements are done. That's, that's the design of his pen. There is no drawing that you look at. It's a bunch of code. A big motivation for that was to improve upon the threads on his pens, which were already pretty darn good for 3D printed, but he controls the tool path on where, and it's gonna start and stop a layer line because you don't want those zits to be on critical parts of the threads. You wanna put them in a very specific spot. He also has his own cool filling system that's on here. So you back it off, turn it down, you put this in, let it go, and it sucks up the ink. He 3D prints this bladder out of TPU, and he's got this, it's like a little foot that's in there with some grippies that grips onto this, right? And as you turn it, it coils this up. So sort of like an old, uh, you know, fountain pen with a sack that's on it. Instead of a pressure bar squeezing it, you just do this. You know, you wring, it out, you wring out a towel, right? Or a sponge, and then it sucks up more. So same idea, you force the air out, you put it in, you undo, it sucks up the ink. I am nowhere near ready for something like that, but as soon as I finish, this model with a resin printer and I get the whole thing done. I wanna make these available so people can 3D print them themselves. Uh, also, if you don't have a 3D printer or don't know anyone who does, sometimes there's 3D printing services in your area, but depending on what it is, I've seen prints that people pay for that are absolute trash, like really, really bad. So I will also look into some very reliable, high quality 3D printers that will, you know, you can send them the file and they'll just 3D print it. And that way we ensure you get a quality model. I also want to do a pen design for an FDM style printer. So a resin style 3D printer and the one that takes the filament. I have my own idea on how to get this very, very clean with minimal post-processing. So I'm excited to try that. I was so desperate. I even took a piece and I dipped this into Bay State Blue thinking maybe if I dye it, that will give it a cool color. But uh, I just got really messy and it, it still looks like crap. I was playing with some basic shapes for the ink reservoir and having your traditional style pen. I was going to do my own version of their pen, you know, your cigar style. As I started playing with this design, it takes a slip cap. I've decided I really want to work on 3D printed fountain pens where we're not doing screw caps. I want to have a slippy snap cap version. So there's some considerations you have to do with materials and just overall design, how you're going to pull that off in a reliable method. Because for me, a poor ceiling cap on a pen is one of my biggest no-nos. It just absolutely drives me nuts. You could have a bum nib on a pen, but you could just tune the nib, fix it, or worst case, replace it. But if you have a pen where the cap doesn't seal very well, then all of a sudden you, you put the pen down at your desk, you come back the next day and it's already dried up. Oh, it's very, very difficult to fix it and it drives you nuts and you just usually don't end up using the pen. So making a good slip cap is a design challenge on its own and then you're restricting yourself to 3D printing but I'm up for the challenge. I'll be spending a bunch of time on this little profile and then the corresponding profile inside the cap liner and how everything's gonna fit together and just snap in really nice. Still line up pretty good here and also provide a good cap seal. And then once this pen is done and this style of printing's done, I'll move on to the filament style 3D printer pen design. So I've been looking at pens that I really like and design things that really impress me. The hook loop system they have on Visconti. I really like that. And that's something you could totally 3D print. So I think I'll be playing around with that design idea. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna be finishing off the review for the Hey Gears 3D printer. I've been playing around with, I have some other 3D prints too. So that's been a bunch of fun for me. Once the main review is done, I'm gonna continue on the work with the pen design after that different style of 3D print. Anyways, we'll leave it there. Work in progress. I'm excited to uh, finish off the review for this machine and then also finish off the pen design and show you how that all looks and how it works. And I want to make it so I'll have what's called a bomb, a bill of materials. So there'll be a shopping list on where you can go and get your parts and anyone can make this. It'll have all the files, instructions for how to print it, then post-processing and then assembly and just general function and how it's gonna work. So I, I think it'd be cool to get more people into the hobby. 3D printing is a really super fun hobby. It's a way bigger crowd than fountain pens. But one thing that drives me nuts with 3D printing is this, a lot of times people just print figurines and stuff and end up making a lot of gadgets because you don't know what else to make. Fountain pens are pretty neat. They're very enjoyable, very tactile. So it's sort of like this perfect mesh of, hey, you can make anything with the 3D printer. So let's make something that's like a hundred plus year old design, but you can use it every single day and you can make it yourself. 
and maybe you, you improve your handwriting a little bit. And perhaps you discover a new hobby that you enjoy and start to appreciate this really super old antiquated device. But for some reason, you 3D print one, you try it out, it works. You're like, hey, you show your friends and you, you take this to school with you, you take this to work with you, whatever, you pull it out and you just enjoy using it and uh, it gets more people into the hobby. And then also people in the 3D printing hobby have a new cool thing that they can print and try out. So I'll just leave it there for now. I got to go finish off this review, a bunch of other stuff too. I appreciate everyone who's watching. That's where things are at with my 3D printed pen. Still a work in progress, but I have at least made some progress. There's this expression that uh, I've heard, and I try to remind myself all the time. Before you can be great, you got to be good. Before you can be good, you got to be bad. And before you can be bad, you got to do something. So I decided... I'll do something. Even if that something is copying someone else, something is still something. And so now I'm bad and hopefully I'll get okay and maybe I'll get to good. We'll see how it goes.